Flacco looking, floats it downfield, and it is incomplete. No, it's intercepted. Intercepted by Byard. How did he catch it? 30, 40, 45, and down. I can't believe it. Glad to have you with us for the Mike Vrabel Show with the head coach. I'm Mike Keith. Titans getting ready to play the Chargers on Sunday, but coming off a defeat at the hands of Denver. You met with the team yesterday, trying to get everybody ready to go back to work. What was the message? Well, I mean, I think what we do is we try to uh, go through the film, teach, coach, hold guys accountable, and make sure that everybody's on the same page. And of all those emotions and things that happened, I think that I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that um, we have the guys, I know we have the guys in place to, to get this thing going, to turn it around. Um, this league does not feel sorry for you. There's another team coming in. Uh, we have to quickly move on. Unfortunately, we're moving on after a loss, um, but, but our, our message uh, is gonna stay the same. We have to do everything we can do to, to prepare for the Chargers to eliminate the mistakes that, that cost us and continue to do the things that are helping us win. Let's take a look at Mike Vrabel's six pack, six plays that affected the ball game for sure in Denver. Starts off with a special teams play and one certainly unusual for the Titans, gave up a return to Deontay Spencer. Yeah, we, we banged one down there. Brett, Brett uh, let one loose there in a the thin air, uh, 59 yarder. Uh, we we got to do a better job of cutting the field. And then we get, you know, the guys at the guard to tackle the wing, we got to get out there. Um, again, great effort, but unfortunately, I don't think it should have come to that. You know, we gave up, uh, you know, the field goal. And uh, we got a great punt, and, and we have to cover it wherever he kicks it, however far he kicks it. Uh, that's what we have to do. Nice job by Kevin Byard to make the tackle. One thing you had preached last week was improving red zone defense. After the return, the Broncos get into the red zone, and you get a good play from Malcolm Butler to get you off the field. A, a great play. So you see Wood there with the uh, the blitz. Um, he's mirroring the hand of the quarterback. Mal Malcolm's playing man coverage. The biggest thing he doesn't do is he doesn't look back and find the ball. He plays the man, and he gets a huge pass uh, disruption, ball disruption, PBU right there. He's playing through, and he's finishing, and he's not staring back at the quarterback, letting the guy get separation. So it's 3-0 at that point, Broncos. We go to the second quarter. Broncos are on the move. They're looking for more. They have third down and one at the Titan 35, and here he comes, Rashawn Evans. Yeah, and Jarrell Casey. You know, Jarrell's see to the left end. Jarrell's down there in that double team, and he goes underneath through that double team. He comes out the other side, and Rashawn triggers uh, for a great, huge, short yardage stop. You can see Jarrell pop up right there, kind of get his legs, and then Rashawn finishes him off. So... Again, I don't want to let the uh, you know, Jarrell's play inside go unnoticed. He allows the double team, allows you know, Rashawn to clean him up right there unblocked. Jarrell Casey with six tackles in the ball game. Rashawn Evans with 11. So it's six to nothing at the half. And then in the third quarter, the Broncos get the game's only touchdown. You saw Phillip Lindsay stopped a moment ago. Unfortunately, this time he was not. Yeah, just not good enough down there. You know, it's second and goal. And, um, you know, we, we have to do a better job. We have to find a way to get that ball on the edge and not let them crease us inside. Um, you know, that was a key, man, forced them to kick field goals when they got down there. Um, and and then that, in that situation, we just weren't able to, to get it done. You are able to force them to kick a field goal in the fourth quarter due to the veteran, Wesley Woodyard. Well, he almost knocks him out of field goal range. And I think that it's a well-executed defense. You can see some movement going on up front. Wood with a tight course around there in the game and, you know, legally um, hits the quarterback, really good hit, you know, great coverage. I thought that was a well-executed play by our defense, and, and they had quite a bit of them in the game. This was just another one of them. Wesley Woodyard playing for the injured Jayon Brown, eight tackles, and that his 28th career sack. One of the best catches of the year for the Titans came from second-year tight end Anthony Ferkser, his first catch of the year. Well, we get a good pocket. We can step up and throw, and, you know, we're throwing it over a coverage two-man, so they're undercutting us, you know. Um, Furt goes up, tacks the football. You know, Ryan, Ryan puts it in a spot where, you know, he feels like Furt's the only guy that can get it. Uh, they're playing underneath him, and he throws it high and is able to, uh, to come up with a huge catch. Should he have been ruled down there? Uh, that's not my decision. Um, <laughs> 
I, I, I don't think so. Um, Looks like he's uh, back up I, again. I, I think that you know that the the back judge came in there and and pretty much demonstratively marked him down. Um, the back judge um, had it at the five. Uh, if you know, my thought was that we could score there. My thought was that these challenges are tricky. Sure. And to to risk a challenge for five yards with a timeout that I knew we would need if we were going to score and, and come back and, and win the football game somehow to get a stop, to, to keep the clock in our advantage. Um, you know, I think there was about three minutes and, and 10 or 15 seconds left when that play happened. Nice catch by Ferkster nonetheless. When we come back, the Bridgestone clutch performance of the game, and it's the mayor of Murfreesboro again. Stay with us for more of the Mike Bravel Show. Fans attending Sunday's Titans game are asked to bring non-perishable food items to donate to Second Harvest Food Bank of Middle Tennessee. Volunteers will be stationed outside Nissan Stadium beginning at 1 o'clock and will accept donations until kickoff. Please help Second Harvest Food Bank of Middle Tennessee this Sunday as the Titans host the Chargers. The Bridgestone clutch performance of the game, it has to go to Kevin Byard for his 15th career interception. And if you were listening to Titans radio, you know I blew it. Look at it. I know. You said it was incomplete. I did. I, you know, you go back and you watch Daquan Jones and uh, Harold run a great game. Harold's coming up the middle of the pocket. There he is. He forces a, a high throw that up in his son goes off the back of Fant. You know, Kevin's. Great hands, catch the ones they throw you. You know, what, we're going to need them to, to fix the return skills a little bit. We'll take that one to the house and get them any way we can get them. But huge play, um, you know, gets us back into field position. And these are the things that we got to do a better job of taking advantage of. You know, short fields with the return game. We got a good return and plus 50. Uh, these turnovers, um, you know, we got to turn those into points. All right, look at something else Kevin Byer did in the game. This is a third down and four pass. This is a 240-pound running back he's going to tackle in the flat. Look at him put him down half short. yard short of the first down. Yep, he, um, he stays on his feet. You know, so many times we, we see guys and, you know, you leave your feet and you get them maybe down and they fall forward. You know, he stays on his feet. He runs through the trap tackle, gives up no yardage after the catch. Uh, really good to see guys. Again, you saw Wood impact in the play coming through the middle of the pocket, got his hand up. Thought, again, that was a well-coordinated you know, defense. Um, give the players and coaches credit. You ready to see the Delta down? I guess yes, the, the hardest part of the week, other than not doing well last week. Go ahead. All right, let's see the player. Coach Mike Brable, the Delta Dental, guess the Titan. Can you guess this Titan? All right, think about it, Coach. We need to go to break. And when we come back, Mike Vrabel will have his guess. He is two of four on the season, guessing the Titan, sponsored by our friends at Delta Dental. Stay with us for more of the Mike Vrabel Show. You got a hint? <laughs> no hint. All right, Coach Mike Vrabel, it's your show. It's your chance to guess the Delta Dental Guess the Titan feature. Who is that Tennessee I, Titan? First of all, I don't think we have anybody on our team that that's that's thinking cute. I mean, we we it's impossible. But I'm going to go with Darius Jennings. Darius Jennings is the guess. It's Rashawn Evans. That that's not. It's impossible. Rashawn Evans is not that good, cute or good looking. Like that's that baby's adorable. That's not Rashawn. It's a, uh, yes, I'll I'll agree. Speaking of linebackers, as I change the subject quickly. Wesley Woodyard is our gladiator of the game, and with good reason. He did a heck of a job for you in the ball game. He, he's a phenomenal leader. He's a great player for us. Um, tough, physical. He cares. Uh, he's always prepared, and, and he leads not only the the linebackers, the defense, the special teams, but this team. And, and we're lucky to have him. We're lucky to have his leadership. Um, and, and again, he was ready to go. Immediately was in the game. Executed everything that we needed him to do. Uh, you saw him blitz there on third down, and, and, and it was uh, huge for us. Amy Wells was excited to sit down with this week's Geico Gladiator of the Game, Wesley Woodyard. Yeah. Let's have a go. Ah, it feels good to be back. 
It's a mindset, fellas. Woo! Make sure we go for a ride, baby. Take for a ride. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Dumb down three. One, two, three. Dumb Dumb it's good to be back, man. It's all a little mile high, baby. Wesley, you were an undrafted free agent. You were signed by Denver in 2008, you spent six seasons there. Going back and playing in that stadium where it all began, what was that experience like for you? It was amazing. I, I know I've been waiting for like six years just to go back there and, you know, run out of the tunnel, see that sea of orange. And, you know, it was cool for, for me because I was able to go back during a ceremonial time when they were honoring Mr. Bowling, rest in peace, Champ Bailey. I got to see some of my old teammates there, a lot of old friends. So it was good going back, nice welcoming. But at the end, I only wanted to get that win. I only wanted to win. Was it a little emotional being back there yeah. and seeing those people again? Yeah, it was. It was a little emotional. I caught myself at uh, one point before the game, like, all right, don't tear up. Because I, I started thinking about my goal as a Ricky was like, I'm going to run out of the tunnel as a starter. And then, like, I got there, all those emotions start coming up and it just made me more hungry. I'm like, ah, oh, don't do it. Did you take a moment to reflect on how far you've come from being that rookie who just wanted to run out of the tunnel to now being in your 12th season? <laughs> yeah, looking back on it, man, uh, I've been extremely blessed. I've played a lot of good football, been on a lot of good teams, played with a lot of great players. <laughs> You had the only Titan sack in that game. Tell me about that moment. What were you seeing on that play? Walk me through it a little bit. That was a great defensive scheme that uh, our defensive coordinator, Dean Pease, drew up last week for us. Kind of a, a, a fake gimme blitz on my side, teasing the offensive guard on my side, and then I looped around, and that was a free sack. That, that blitz had been open the whole game. I got three pressures on it, and finally uh, I was able to cash in. Making big plays in the fourth quarter of a game even when you're having such a frustrating day yeah. of football. Does that demonstrate in your mind leadership skills or leadership abilities? Right, because you know, it doesn't matter if you're up 21 or down 21, your approach should be the same. You know, I wanna go out there, I wanna be great, I wanna win this down, I wanna dominate the guy across from me. And we have a lot of great guys on our team that understand that and that get it. And you know, being on the defensive side, you can see like the passion, the fuel and the fire that guys have when they get on the field. How do you guys stick so close together on that side of the ball and continue to improve week after week after week? Man, because we love to compete against each other. You know, when you see a guy like KB make a play or a guy like Jayon make a play, you see Rashawn come in making big tackles and it's like it, it fuels us. And now you got guys on the sideline like, oh, I want to get a pick. So that's where we are as a defense, man. We know what it takes to win and we know how to keep you know, ourselves into the game. You lead, I lead. That follow? You lead, I lead? Bet, that follow. Let's do it. Follow, baby, I love you. Hey, man, ain't nothing to be said. Be in the moment, live in the moment, fly around with our brothers, let's get back on track. For this Titans team as a whole going forward, how important is leadership going to be in that some of this team's leaders, including yourself, really step up and take the lead? Every day, we got to come to work with our lunch pail, our hard hats on. Guys looked up for us for advice and for guidance to, to make right decisions and to show them the way when things get hard. And that's why, you know, you have to have great leaders in place to lead the team because it's not going to be easy peasy all the time. It's going to be hard. You're going to meet adversity and you need those strong pillar of guys in your locker room to hold everybody accountable. And that's what we have to do. The adversity is what makes the wins even sweeter. That's amazing. <laughs> I like that quote. <laughs> Best Titans play to end a first half? That's easy. Monday Night Football, October 30th, 2000 in our nation's capital. One of the best to ever play cornerback in Tennessee Titans history, Samari Roll running out the clock by running 81 yards. Johnson snaps it. Looking, looking, firing down the middle of the field. Ball intercepted, Samari Roll. 20, Go 25, buddy. 30. 35, cuts back to the middle of the field, 40, 45, 50. He's got 45, 40, 35, 30. Time has run out on the first half. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Can he get in? Touchdown, yes. Titans! Yes! Samari Roll! Samari Roll actually had a second interception in the game as he stepped in front of his boyhood idol, Deion Sanders, as Sanders was actually in the game on offense with Washington desperate for speed late. Samari Roll finished the 2000 season with seven interceptions and made the Pro Bowl. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show. NFL players, coaches, and staff get to do many cool things. 
One of the best parts of the job? Using their power as celebrities to bring light into people's lives, especially the lives of children. One of the best ways that the Titans do that is in partnership with Make-A-Wish of Middle Tennessee. Marcus Perry. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> this is Bryson, and obviously Bryson is a superstar. What's up, buddy? <laughs> you are the cutest thinking thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> After all, look at how the Tennessee Titans reacted to him being around the team recently. <laughs> <laughs> they were just as excited to meet Bryson as he was to meet them. Or at least, it was close. The Tennessee Titans are Bryson's team. He's with the Titans 24-7, 365 days a year. And so when Make-A-Wish of Middle Tennessee offered Bryson his own wish, he made it clear that he wanted to be with his team, his guys. <laughs> He's nonverbal. He can say a few words, but he can use his device, and he'll talk about this forever. And JJ will too. This is his brother, because they're real close. He'll say, when I get home, I play with JJ video games, Madden, Tennessee Titans. Like, that's how he talks on his device. But this, it's, it's just been fun. This is a memory that will last forever for us, and if we can get a picture and just blow it up, I'm sure Bryson will look at it every day, morning, noon, and night. The Tennessee Titans and Make-A-Wish of Middle Tennessee form an incredible team giving youngsters like Bryson something that money cannot buy. Lasting memories that come from one-on-one -on -one contact, or sometimes entire team contact. My favorite part is watching their faces, the family's faces, the wish kids' faces, the siblings' faces. Um, just almost stunned to see their heroes in real life. Um, Jaden even said, they're so much bigger than I even thought they would be. They look little on TV. So just to hear that sort of thing, to see it come to life for them is indescribable. It's so fun. As you can see, it's just as much fun for the Titans. The organization's commitment to make a wish of Middle Tennessee is longstanding. And when a special guest like Bryson hits the field, every member of the Titans team, whether an on-field or off-field staffer, takes part in trying to make the latest visit bigger and better than the last. And the Make-A-Wish staff clearly appreciates the effort. Honestly, it's the easiest process probably of any wish we do. The Titans are so great about just working with us. All we have to do is call and say, we have a wish kid. And they drop everything and plan the wish for us, plan the day for us. We just show up and they make them feel like stars. And they love it, love it, love it. We do too. <laughs> Coach Vrabel, why is Make-A-Wish so important to you? Well, I think that it just shows um, the impact that our organization and our players um, can have and, and also the impact that those people and those children can have on us. Um, you know, you win with people, uh, and, and we got the right people here uh, to, to win and to do things, and I'm proud of our players for what they do on and, on and off the field. Um, but that was that was special. Those, those those kids that come in here, and Bryson was excited, and the joy uh, that he had that uh, that Saturday and Sunday. You guys are great to make him happy like that. Good stuff, Coach. Thank you. Good stuff. Let's get a break, and when we come back, Mike Vrabel's keys to success to beat the Los Angeles Chargers. Stay with us for more of the Mike Vrabel Show. Mike Vrabel's keys to success to knocking off the Los Angeles Chargers. It begins with run the dang ball. Mike, we got to get started. We got to run it from two back offense. We got to run it from one back gun, uh, 11 personnel. You know, there, there's different ways to run the football, and, I, and nobody wants to hear, and, and neither do I, that, that we were close on some plays that, you know, the other day. We, we, we got to make sure that we're consistently running the football with the backs that we have. Uh, open up some things offensively. The play passes off of it. You know, whatever else uh, we're trying to design, but but I think that we got to get back to running the football. Chargers have a good returner in Desmond King. You know, we have to be able to corral this guy. Um, they're probably licking their chops after last week. Uh, he had a touchdown two weeks ago. He's a strong runner. He, he's not somebody that probably is going to circle you up, but he breaks a lot of tackles. He's got great vision and he's fearless. Phillip Rivers is the quarterback for the Chargers. One of the things that he does well, third down conversion. It's really strength on strength. Uh, they're, they're fourth in the league, and 
and then I think we're in the top five defensively. Uh, they're, they're converting at almost 50% on third down. They're maintaining possessions, uh, continuing those drives, and it'll be critical for us defensively uh, to get off the field. You certainly know the challenge. You saw them one year ago in London. That's it, and uh, you know we, we got to get to work. This time it's at Nissan Stadium. Game time is 3.05. We hope you'll listen to the game on Titans Radio. We're on 104.5 The Zone in Nashville beginning at 2 on Sunday. The Titans and the Chargers from Nissan Stadium. We hope to see you there. For head coach Mike Vrabel, Mike Keith says thanks for watching the Mike Vrabel Show. Good night, everybody.